morning, friends. I'm going to start with another screen test. It's just kind of a ritual. I, I pass the brass, not brass, this is copper. You know, I start to see a little bit of a little bit of a green sheen in the crack here already. I think the copper is starting to do its thing. Oxidize, right? It turns green, doesn't it? So I could polish this frequently and probably keep it looking good. So why did Synergetics not catch on? I'm talking from 2019 here, March. And um, clearly the Bucky stuff is obscure. It did not make it into the schools. And I rant about that. I've been doing my morning rant. But the facts are the facts. I think there's been a lot since graphene and C60 and all the you know, starting with carbon chemistry and Linus Pauling, I think 120 degree angles, hexagons, pentagons have come to replace just straight XY coordinates as kind of your graphic designer artist's um, backdrop for high tech. When you want to connote high tech, including human high tech, you're going to show them a lot of hexagons nowadays. It looks more chemical. It looks more organic chemistry. And in that sense, I think Fuller's thinking was kind of in line with what he stridently called discovering the geometry of nature. I would say in less strident terms is simply discovering um, organic chemistry, perhaps. So we found that the right angle is not the basic constituent of organic chemistry so much as 120 degree kind of 60 degree triangulated stuff and that makes sense right because triangles are at the end of the day more stable than squares and so your triangular bond your three tri your three atoms in a triangle is going to be more stable than four atoms in a square stuff like that and i don't think it took synergetics to to discover that i think it took humanity to discover that and then synergetics just distills one guy's, it's kind of a vortex of specific insights. So Fuller is kind of the Donald Knuth of a new sort of geometric way of thinking. He's the father of whatever. But it didn't catch on. Now, I was scrolling through an essay of mine on Medium about a roadmap for synergetics. And what I, I tend to do is take the memory palace approach. The No More Secondhand God especially is a book in this um, domain where you just think of every knowledge domain, every namespace, you could say, of human culture as kind of like a planet, like in The Little Prince, right? I haven't read this for a long time. It was a childhood favorite. Um, this uh, little prince, he flies from planet to planet somehow, and each planet is inhabited by like a spirit or a person who typifies a knowledge domain, as I recall, like accountants or something like that, bankers. So if you want to study accounting or banking, think of zooming in on a planet and what dots do you need connect to, to connect to connect? Like put all your features of a, of a discipline on a spherical surface and make a network. So I think another innovation that's core to synergetics is instead of taking a network uh, and thinking of it as a flat thing that just goes off in all directions or goes off kind of uh, on a plane, like you're looking down on a desert and you're watching it disappear um, peripherally. Instead, we, we zoom out and we see that networks on a desert are really ultimately on a sphere and are going to connect around. And that's a kind of thinking too, right? When all your thinking connects around, that's what part, partly what makes Fuller poetic is because he was into this memory palace aspect, investigating thinking itself, in other words, meta thinking, thinking about thinking. And how, how can we make it more spherical? What does that even mean? Right, so I think synergetics is an inve uh, investigation into spherical thinking. If it were to catch on, what do I look for? In other words, what do I? How, I was just talking about how I see changes in, say, Nature magazine, just the the, the graphics themselves. 
they've changed, the look and feel of things. And I kind of look in that area when I'm trying to see uh, if Synergetics is making progress. It's not just the the, the golf ball at Epcot. Uh, I am impressed by, um, you know, domes and spheres. I definitely look for those, of course. But also, well, what I'm really looking for is something more explicit, which is actually let's let's go through the concentric hierarchy in in some detail. By the way, I have a meeting today coming up. Yesterday was the day Facebook went down. So let's see, has it come back yet? It was a big day in the news. I thought it was just me. I was taking it personally. How come I can't post anything? What did I say wrong? But then it turned out, no, no, no. This was the whole of Facebook pretty much around the world. And um, social media. I look in social media for signs that, you know, and I look at the sacred geometry people. Let's just put it put it there. That, that, that you can telegraph your awareness of geometry to one another in the form of YouTubes, animated GIFs, such and such. That's kind of what I look look for, is um, a language. I look for synergetics to percolate into the language, and I look at social media, and I've been pointing out places where I think that's been happening, right? Yesterday's meetup at the Linus Pauling House, I was, um, that was my, the subject of my last video, as I was up at 4 a.m. getting ready to go to this um, Mom had a great time, I'd say, and I was in chauffeur mode. I didn't really feel like talking much, so I was getting a breath of fresh air. It was pretty crowded anyway. They didn't need another guy with an opinion at the table, so I did not speak much, and I had an okay time. And I'm glad Mom got to go. That's the main thing. All right, so that's what I look for. I look for... People who could be fluent in the concentric hierarchy to allude to it in social media and then to actually teach it hardcore as an accessible topic. I think kind of what happened to synergetics is this, that people's image of what we're looking for, what it takes, is something in particle physics, like the God particle. Why did discovery of a boson get called the God particle, and it had to do with completing the standard model or being sure about a certain, you know, computational way of understanding what's going on with the particles in quantum physics, what's conserved, what's likely, and that's where we're looking kind of, because that's where the bombs came from, the nuclear bombs. We know that if we look at physics, that's where some big breakthroughs are supposed to come from. They're hoping for like zero point energy or something like that. We look to physics with hope. And synergetics looks and sounds a lot like a physics and does mention particles and Fuller's out there talking about his proton, neutron, half quantum, anti-neutrino. He's got that lingo going. He wants to be in there too with particle physics. But it's inherent also in the synergetics um, philosophy that, you know, we can understand particle physics to the nth degree. They don't predict the rules of, of that at that level, at that frequency, at that scale. Don't predict all the rules above them at the higher scales. In other words, Fuller's philosophy is not deterministic in the sense that the laws of the small determine the laws of the large. As you change the scale, new principles emerge because um, because of synergy, really. The little does not determine the big, or the simple does not determine the complex. The, the whole is more than some of the parts. So a lot of unpredictability there. Um, at each level, though, you have what you could call laws. Um, the book Scale uh, by West, West, right, from Santa Fe Institute. That's good on this topic. Anyway, um, I think that's enough. I'm, I'm going to go into a meeting here shortly um, here on uh, after school anywhere training. I'll see how that goes. So I'll talk to you in a minute.
next uh, next time.